Persuadable. What's going on, everybody? Oh man, y'all been waiting for this. Y'all been waiting for this for over a month now. So the reason why I've been really careful about not releasing a survivor guide too too early is because I went I wanted to wait for the Cowboys release. Um so that was important for me. And yeah, so <laughs> I already know y'all looking at this. Y'all not even gonna let me explain. Y'all y'all about to pill Put your arguments in the YouTube and whatnot before I can even explain why there are changes. So, cool down, relax, don't don't freak out like all of us when we're in the tier two lobby and somebody decides to play lawyer. It's okay. We're going to explain all this out. So, I, first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Anori Remy. Anori Remy has helped me considerably, um, and I also want to give a shout out to Liv. Uh, she was a former top twenty hunter, and. So before we talk about this, let's first talk about some of the changes. Um, the methodology to describe these tiers. I was also ranked first overall in, in the United States, former top 10 survivor currently a top. I used to be a top 50 hunter as well. Now I'm a top 75 hunter. I haven't been playing rank as much. But so this is a lot of data that's involved in this. We observed what a lot of people over in China are using. And we're also observing what a lot of us are using over here in the U.S. And we kind of combine them. One of the important things, right, is that I have conducted research in physical energy expenditure for my master's degree, right? When we try to do research, we try to be as objective as possible. Which means that if I do a research study, I want to build on that research with a new study. And I look at my first study and I say, okay, this is where... I probably could have done better and we improve studies this is the scientific process okay and we try to use this to do the best that we can so you are going to see changes within some of the characters and the reason being so is that we are addressing former mistakes or former areas of analysis that maybe we didn't do a good enough job in or because of the introduction of new characters other people actually get bumped up that does happen so with that being said, we're going to really dissect all of these characters. There's not going to be any gameplay. I'm going to try to do the best job that I possibly can. I'm going to start talking about these characters in case somebody is new. This is mostly for mobile users. The PC version is coming out. The PC will have different, different categories perhaps because the mouse, you can control different characters better. And furthermore, this is for one versus four mode. This is not for one versus eight, or I'm sorry, two versus eight. When there's two versus eight, we'll make a separate t character, uh, survivor and hunter tier list. And I do have a hunter tier list that's coming out tomorrow. So you guys can check that out. There's just too many characters. I, I can't do that all in one video. So, you guys ready? Hold on, let me, let me drink some coffee. Don't be in the YouTube comments. L Calm down. I know y'all looking at forward. Just give me a second. All right, here we go. So, S tier characters. We understand how important Thief used to be and still somewhat is. He has a 15% Volton bonus, which is the second best in the game. Only forward is better than him. Mercenary and coordinator are lower than him at 10%. So he has the second best Volton speed in the game. Furthermore, what's good about the Thief, and we know this, is that he doesn't have a decode debuff, so he can decode and he can kite. He's also a hard counter to the geisha with his moonwalk. And I I have videos on that against the top hunters in the game, and you can see how you can you can do that. So he used to be one of the most important characters. That's starting to change a little bit now that we have perfumer in the mix, but we'll, you know, we will talk about that in a little bit. Um he's still an S tier character. You still can use him, nobody will be mad. Um, he has this weird sort of buffed debuff to him where he increases calibrations. Now, the normal, we, we operationalize decoding at 100%, and that means that if you are a 100% decoder, right, that just means that you're a normal decoder, right? So if you're somebody who has a buff to it, like let's say a 35% buff, you would be 135%. If you're the forward and you have a 30% debuff, you're a 70% buffer, right? So... At 100% buff speed with the Thief, it takes about 70 seconds, right? Back on to what I just said. His weird sort of buff and debuff is that he activates the calibrations more, but 
by getting perfects, you can reduce your 70 seconds down to 65. It can save you five seconds. The problem, however, is that using Thief with the increased calibration, sometimes it's very difficult to exit a, a, a chart, I'm sorry, a machine when a geisha teleports on you or when a clown has a charged up propeller, right? Two different attachments that make the propeller, the infinite propeller, longer and faster. And sometimes it's hard to get off and they get a free hit on you. And we don't want that. That's never good. For top competitive play, it's almost like a guaranteed kill at that point, depending on where you are. So that's kind of like a, like a pro and a con mixed in together. So we all understand that Thief is still good. By the way, in each tier, they're not in order, right? It doesn't mean that Thief is the best. That's not what it means. It just means that they're relatively in the same sort of continuum. They're, they're in the same sort of sphere as each other. Now, Coordinator. Coordinator, we should all understand, is the most important character in the game. She is in every single uh, character team she was in every single tournament win with the Chinese. She's in, she's in every single U.S. top tier team. Every single person has her. Um, she does have a dynamic debuff, which means that she doesn't have a static debuff, which means that her debuff only occurs, as we know, when somebody gets onto the rocket chair. That's important because if you can kite well, there's no negative implication. She also has a 10% Volton bonus, so she has chitin ability. And she also has a good perseverance on the rocket chair. So, that puts the hunter at a real disadvantage. If a hunter goes after a coordinator early game, it's somewhat of, 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 a, of a negative implication. Because with the coordinator, if you put her on the rocket chair and if you camp her, it's really bad for you because all of the other machines will go down very fast. Especially if you have a mechanic, which we'll get to. So she adds this versatility where it's like, do you even go after her early game? Some hunters will try to get you to use your flare gun. So it's a common strategy, a basic rule. There's some circumstances when you don't need to listen to this, but typically never use your flare gun when you kite. Don't do it, right? Because if you use your flare gun when you're kiting and the exit gates haven't been opened, you still have five cyphers, it's difficult for the rest of your team to save you. So keep your, keep your flare gun. Don't use it, even if you go down, because it's not too horrible. I think your time on the rocket chair is about 95 seconds, and other people should not rescue you right away, because then you're just going to die faster as a coordinator. So she is used in every single team. She has the best rescue capability with that flare gun stun, plus her added bonus to that stun for being coordinator. I believe her stun is longer than, like, let's say, a lucky guy that picks up a flare gun. So she is the best. Although, you can only use her one time, the, the flare gun, that is. Uh, you can use the tide turner as well. That's a popular build. So we all understand why she's S tier. Let's get to Magician. So Magician is S tier, but he has a, he has a lot of consequences to him. We need another sip of coffee. No apple juice. It's too early. So, with the Magician, we know that he is a pretty relatively good counter against the Clown. Thief is a hard counter against Geisha. He's a counter, not a hard counter, a counter to Joker. So, his illusions really can help him out with the early tight, uh, tight kite and strategy. Uh, he can really prolong that, that time that it takes to, to get him in the beginning of the game. Uh, he pretty much has two boo-boos, right? That's the illusions that he has. However... With that being said, there is a consequence to using him. Um, he only has two illusions. You can get Terra Shocked if you don't use it appropriately. And when you get put on the rocket chair, it takes 100% longer, right? So if we caliber, if we say you know 100% speed, um, it's going to take you twice as long to rescue him. So there is a negative consequence of, of going after him. And, and also, furthermore, with that being said, there is a good strategy of going after him because even though he can kite you longer, it will be easier for you to down the coordinator that goes and tries to rescue him. But he's still S tier, but he has a consequence. Everybody has a coordinator has a consequence. Um, and that's the debuff, especially after she uses her flare gun. Um, and if somebody's on the cipher machine. So just because people have consequences doesn't mean that they're not S tier. So he's definitely an S tier character. Um, Perfumer. So Perfumer is new to the list. Hold on. Itchy notes. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Can't edit this stuff. She is new. She's my babe. She, if you guys have been watching my YouTube, you can see how you use her on a professional level. I mean, it's to the point where hunters, I mean, at this point, some hunters just, they, they see me using perfumer and they just leave. Because I'm going to waste your time. I will waste easily two minutes of your time almost every time. 
And it, it, that's not because of me. It's just because it's it's easy, relatively easy to kite in this game. Hunters are at a disadvantage, and she has three of her perfumes that she can use, and you need to use them appropriately. I get asked this question all the time, so I'm going to address it in this video. Who is better, magician or perfumer? I will admit that the magician is better late game if he has not used his uh, illusions. However, I still think perfumer is definitely better than magician. Um, and the reason being so, I know that in the Chinese server, I believe Magician is used in like every single tier, and um, Perfumer is sometimes a flex, she's still S tier, um, but Perfumer, although she doesn't have the illusions, she doesn't have a consequence to being captured, it doesn't, it, it doesn't put the, co the coordinator at a disadvantage. You also have more skills than what the illusion does, you have three Perfumes, whereas the Magician only has two illusions, however, the good thing about magician skill is that when he uses his ability and the clown hits his uh, his thing, okay, it gives him a lot of time to relocate. Whereas the perfume, it depends on certain circumstances. We've all been in that situation where we get hit and then we use our perfume and he's right there for another hit. So you have to have preparation with the perfumer skill. You can't use it last minute. You can to absorb one attack, it, that is possible. But you can use the magician's skill at the last second if you really need to. You got to be careful with that though, because you can still be terror shot. Whereas the perfumer requires a little bit of, of uh, preparation time. But ultimately, she has more time she can use the perfume. She doesn't have a negative consequence for being captured, so it's easy to rescue her. And it's easier for her to go in for the rescue. Uh, the magician is not as good at rescuing as what the perfumer does. We all know that combination with the perfumer where you put your perfume, you go for the rescue, you get hit, then you rescue, then you use your perfume. Now you can body block, right? So that is something that the magician cannot do. Therefore, I would operationalize the perfumer is better than the magician simply because she's better at saving. The chitin thing is an argument. She's better at early game chitin, whereas the magician is better at late game chitin. Um, and their decoding is relatively the same. But because she has that factor where she can go in for the save and she can be used a lot more um, versatile than the Magician, I would definitely want a Perfumer before a Magician. However, I'd want both on my team if it were up to me, depending on the format. Okay, so, Mechanic. This is where I messed up last season. I think the Mechanic should have been S tier last season. I'm not going to lie. Coffee. The mechanic had an 8% boost to everybody's decode speed. It was too powerful, so the devs nerfed her. But what they did is they gave her puppet a 25% decode increase, which means that her puppet, remember those numbers we were using, is now 125%. Now you may be asking, why is mechanic A tier? Mechanic is A tier simply because she's very versatile. She lost that 8% decode bonus to everybody, but she still has 3%, which you can expect that to be about 2 seconds faster for everybody to decode. But the bonus here is that if she's captured, she's a lot more dangerous than what she used to be because now her puppet is at 125%, which means that while she's sitting on the rocket chair, she's not trying to get her puppet to rescue, all right? she's still decoding that machine as long as the hunter didn't take the machine down. Which means that that is very dangerous. Think about it, right? So I'm the hunter. The mechanic is able to get her doll somehow, and she's moving around, whatever. I kill the mechanic. I put her on the chair. Now the coordinator is going to come for the rescue, right? However, her two teammates are still decoding, and now she's got like kind of like a little bit of a pseudo mind's eye decoding another machine. So as I camp her, three machines are still going down, regardless. Furthermore, she can use her doll by the exit gate to decode that. Uh, to decode that execute and she can run while the exit gate is going down i mean it's it's a perfect combination for her, and that's why a lot of mechanic users only use her doll near ciphers near the exit gate you take down the cipher you prepare yourself for the exit gate i mean it's just one of many different strategies um so she she probably should have been s tier last round I, I i you can make that argument i believe that the best chinese team used her they were called it's called a speed team thank you anori remy for telling me that and now, because of her, her buffs and nerfs and stuff, I think that she's equalized out. She's still A tier, and I would still love to have her on my team. Um, the only thing is, is that now puppets, when you when, when they go down, it's a bigger penalty. So you can't just be throwing puppets like it's like it's candy anymore. You got to be careful with those puppets. The minute you lose your two puppets, we'll just use that number. Um, 
is the minute that now you're useless, right? Because you lose your two puppets, and now you're just this character with a huge debuff when everybody else is injured, right? Every time somebody is injured, it reduces her decode potential. So there's a lot of skill. There needs It's a lot of head games, and there, there's a lot of potential with her. Um, but she's still a very top-tier character, and I would still use her in, in rank mode any day. Inori Remy is one of the best mechanic players I've ever seen. She's tier 6 over here in the U.S. She's tier 5 or tier 6 in the Chinese servers as well. And uh, she plays her phenomenally. So, all right, making sure I cover. I do this in one take. I don't. I don't chop up my video. So with mechanic, like I said, her decode to her puppet has been increased. Her decode buff to everybody has been decreased, but it's still at three percent. Um, and she has that ability to use her to to use her puppet to possibly go and rescue in certain uh, certain circumstances. Um, so she has a lot of versatility that other characters don't have. Okay. Time to get the B tier. Oh, boy. I got to see what time this is because I got I to gotta add, like, a link because I know there's a lot. I think we have 15 minutes and 48 seconds, not including the intro. Uh, so, yeah, we yeah this is going to be good. All right. So <laughs> let's talk about Mind's Eye first. So we all agree that Mind's Eye is a glass cannon. She's definitely not, like, a mechanic. But Mind's Eye can be absolutely dangerous. Um, she's still relatively easy to kill. A, a lot of a, a, there are some top kiters that do use her and they use her effectively, which makes her even more dangerous. The problem is, is that once she's captured, it's difficult because if you try to rescue her, she doesn't have that much escape potential. Even if you have a even if you have a coordinator, stunning. So she's definitely not as versatile as 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 mechanic. But she does have a little bit of power to her punch. There's a gamble using her for the reasons that I just said. Her decode, I believe, is at 130%, so she's really good. Technically, the mechanic, I guess, technically can decode faster than her because even though the puppet's at 125, you can have two of them on the same machine. That's not a popular tactic, but the mechanic, typically, you want to you wanna decode to about 30 to 50% and then put your doll there, and then you want to relocate and let your doll... Because oh, By the way, I forgot to say this. With the mechanic... If you have the doll on the machine, about every four to seven seconds, you can expect um, some sort of shock. Now, you can allow that shock to happen, and if you allow the shock to happen, that can actually distract the hunter. Sure, you'll lose your puppet, but you just wasted 15 seconds of that hunter's time. So there, there's a lot of versatility there with that mechanic. The mind that doesn't really have it. She adds a little bit of vision. That vision is important, though, right? And she also has an amazing decode at 130%. She's still not really seen in top tiers. I did put her in B because you do have the random stragglers that use her. Um, and most people would rather you use mechanic. Um, we'll see how long I continue keeping Mind's Eye at B. It's, it, there's a very good reason why she may go down to C, depending on what other characters do. Um, we don't really see her at top tiers. Now, done with Mind's Eye. Let's do forward. So remember in the beginning of the video, I talked about uh, the scientific process I talked about objectivity and we try to be objective we look at our methodology and we try to improve on that so um, I had sort of this this method this, this sort of operationalization that means that that's how I define something right if you want to measure love you have to define it what is love all oh, every time somebody kisses it's a indicator of love just as an example right and you can argue that you can say that's not an indicator of love for whatever reasons so Whatever we do, methodology, we try to build on our operationalizations and our conceptualization. So, I initially said that if you have a static debuff, you're automatically in tier D. For the most part, that is somewhat true still. However, there are circumstances, and that's where we get to forward. So, before I even start this, you should know that some of the top Chinese players in the game use forward. I believe the top one or top two Chinese users use forward. The thing about forward is that although he has a 30% debuff to his to his uh, static decode, he adds versatility like no other character, almost, right? So we know that he is the best raw kiter in the game. Now, that doesn't include the perfumer's abilities, and that doesn't include the, the, the magician's illusions. In terms of just stats... He is the best kiter, right? He throws the pallet down 50% faster, so it's harder for the clown to actually hit you when you throw a pallet down. He has 20% Volton bonus, so it's near impossible to hit him on that pallet and get that terror shock. Um, we, he has an amazing skill. The, the football is actually a good skill if you know how to use it, right? So he is the best kiter. The thing about forward is that a lot of people are using him incorrectly. Now, if you're a computer user, 
you could even argue that he even may, may be an A tier character. But because a lot of us are mobile users, he'd probably be more comfortably in B or C. So B is going to be that comfortable middle. Although this is primarily a mobile device uh, rating. Now, with the forward, the thing about him is that he's also the second best rescuer in the game. right? Because the coordinator only has her flare gun and she can only use it once. The forward can literally stun the hunter, rescue, and allow that little bit of wiggle room for the survivor to get away. No other character can do that, and no character can do that consecutively. When we measured the forward at tier D, we judged it based on his static debuff, and it is wrong, because top tier players in China are using him. They do use him. He wasn't part of any of the winning tournament teams, right? But there is a certain strategy that does work with him. But it comes down to a competent player, which means that his potential is there. And we negatively scored him based on how many bad players there are or were are using him it's like looking at mechanic we might as well put mechanic at c because there's a lot of people that don't know how to use her but that's not fair to mechanic because there are users who really use him effectively or her rather and it's the same thing with forward so people use forward incorrectly and i'm going to come out with a guide with forward but here's technically the rundown version of how you use forward you get out of cypher machine in the beginning of the game you don't run around, you don't be useless, you don't be stupid. You don't try to get the hunter's attention like an idiot. You can shock yourself on the machine. You gotta make sure you're not faced in a feaster though, all right? But you can shock yourself on the machine if you want, but really you need to decode immediately because experienced hunters will ignore you. So when you decode a machine, you're doing two things, right? Three things, huh, more. There's a one in four chance, or three in four chances that the hunter isn't going after you. He's, there's a good probability that he's gonna be closer to somebody else. So you want to decode as much as you can in the early game until somebody is injured once. When somebody is injured once, that's when you get off the machine and you go and position yourself. And I'll talk about that positioning in a second. right? But if you're decoding a machine right away, there's a good chance that if you have a good team, you can get that machine halfway to three-fourths full, sometimes even do the whole machine without somebody getting injured right? because you have good teammates. So you need to decode. But sometimes you'll be at that halfway mark and somebody gets hit once. That's fine because you still have half of a cipher machine left. That's very easy for a thief to come and finish later on or whatever. Then you reposition yourself. However, the reason why you also want to decode a machine is because a lot of hunters look for the wiggle and teleport. A lot of top tier hunters know that if you shock yourself as a forward, I'm not going to go over there. Right? Because I know you're trying to get my attention. So I'm just going to say, okay, I know the forward's there. That actually makes my job easier because I'm going to go elsewhere. So a lot of top tier forwards, they don't even shock themselves all the time. They just start getting that machine to that 30 to 50% to make a wiggle. The hunter sees it. Now he wastes his time coming towards you. And now he feels obligated to come after you. Because he's already wasted a ridiculous amount of time. So forward, you want to decode as soon as possible. And then when somebody's injured, that's when you want to position yourself. So the thing with the forward, and this is why he's not S tier, is that it's based on early game position. And if you have bad teammates who die with a terror shock... Now that sucks. But here's the thing. You have a coordinator, you have a forward, right? Coordinator's debuff doesn't activate until somebody gets on that rocket chair. So if you have a good forward and you have a good teammate where that allows you enough time to position yourself, he can be a monster. He can be annoying. It's typically a technique for a hunter to not pick up the survivor when somebody is down, unless they have excitement. They'll actually try to hit the forward one time. Because then if you hit the forward one time and he comes charging in, then he's an easy kill. So you ruin the forward's ability, right? But the thing about the forward is that he could still waste your time. If you knock somebody down and then that forward is preparing to run into you, right? Now computer users have an advantage. They can be behind the wall, start their skill and do a quick turn and hit the hunter, right? So that's why forward is better on PC. But he can really prevent that person from putting that other individual on the rocket chair, no other character can do that. Priestess can't do that. Mercenary can't do that. No one can do that. So he's a fear factor. And if he can prevent that survivor from going on that rocket chair for 30 seconds, that's half of a cypher machine. Almost. If you have a mechanic on your team and the mechanic is left alone and you're harassing, that's amazing. You're also putting less of a burden on the coordinator now because she can keep decoding because you're prolonging the period of time that it takes. So you might be saying, well, but you're not decoding a machine. Sure. 
but you're increasing the survivability of the team, and it's an equal trade-off if you know what you're doing. The problem is, is that he's not S tier for the reasons I said. If you ruin that early game positioning, then it's going to be hard for you to do your job. And then at that point, if somebody gets put in the rocket chair before you can position yourself, then usually you want the coordinator to go rescue, and it's your job to go decode because the coordinator has a bigger debuff than what you do. So with the forward, it takes a lot of skill, a lot of time. But the good thing about the forward is that after the rescue, right, after the coordinator uses her flare gun, now it's up to the forward to go and rescue the best that he can because he doesn't have to rely on his flare gun. And a competent... Uh, so not only is he the best kiter, right, but a competent forward can be the best harasser. And more than that, he can prolong the, the entire team's life if he's completely good and competent at what he's doing, but he's the second best saver in the game. He's not the first. Technically, that would be coordinator, right? Just because our flare gun adds that ridiculous amount of stun time that can really allow me the five seconds that I need to get into a position, and then I can kite again for another minute, minute and a half, two minutes, and we'll win the game. But the forward can add a second or two. Stun, rescue. Now, So that is why the forward is a B-tier character. He is good. It is a strategy, and it is seen in high-tier matches. And... If we just simply say that he's not good because of his decode, it's disgenuine or disingenuine because he is used, he's used by top players, and that strategy does exist. Now, whether you want to do that strategy is up to you. But it doesn't mean that regardless of our subjective views, objectively, the strategy is out there and the strategy works on high top competitive gameplay. And if I just stick to our former methodology, it is wrong. It's not correct. So we have two options here. We either fix it to address the fact that this is happening in top tier games and people are winning against the best hunters in the world with this strategy, or Persuadable just has an ego and says, no, I'm not budging, it's wrong. So we can't judge the forward based on bad gameplay. We need to judge him based on what he is capable of doing. And we also have to take into consideration about other variables, such as how likely is the, the strategy going to work, um, what is the difference between the computer and the mobile gameplay? So that's why he is comfortably at B tier. And that's why he is no longer a D tier character. He just takes an incredible amount of skill and computer users have a significant advantage using him. He's the best kiter in the game. All right, You're not going to kill a competent forward if he's good. And on top of that, he's the second best rescuer in the game. Sure, his decode is bad. I, I address that. But he's the difference between prolonging that survivor's uh, life when they go down. Literally, he can prolong that for, for 20, 30 seconds. Guys, that's half of a cipher machine. That makes up for, for your... De so it really does... It, it does depend a little bit on the hunter. It depends on you, but that's where it comes down to strategy and gameplay. And it is worth it. And you allow the coordinator to continue decoding in that certain circumstance. And another thing is, is that if somebody goes on the rocket chair, right? Say, if you, say you prolong it for 20, 25 seconds, and somebody's on the rocket chair... You have to make a choice. I mean, the, the forward can either stay there and try to go for a rescue, and it now means that the coordinator doesn't use their flare gun. But you've got to be careful, because if you rescue and you fail, now that person's going to die faster. But the point is, is that you have incredible amount of versatility with him, and we need to address that. He is the only static debuff character that is worth it. And you're going to ask, why is Mercenary and Priest is still in uh, Tier D? I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, this is a long video, guys, but you guys have waited over a month for this, and you deserve this in-depth response. Okay. Let's get to Gardener. Gardener, we talked about why Gardener is Tier C. Um, she has that veteran bonus when she's injured. She doesn't have a debuff to her, her Vulton. She doesn't have a debuff to her decoding. You just don't want to be taking rocket chairs down like it's candy, right? Because that's not how you use her. Um, there are a few strategies that you can use with her. My favorite strategy is don't take rocket chairs down unless the hunter is really close to you and he downs a survivor. Then you can take that rocket chair down. That's, that's a strategy. And if you didn't take other rocket chairs down, that means that you're going to take that rocket chair down faster, right? The other strategy is, is you know, you decode normal, you do your normal thing, and then if there's one cypher left and you have your full team up or three people up and you know they're taking that down, you can technically take the nearest three or four chairs down closest to a gate. Um, and then you also increase your struggle speed on your persona build, and you'll be able to escape, and it will give you enough time where other people can get away. It is a strategy whether you want to do it or not. 
I know uh, Remy Inori, one of her strategies is to put four chairs at 99% because if you if you only do one chair at a time at 99% and you don't decode it uh, or destroy it, each chair is going to be deconstructed just as fast, right? If I take down a chair, the second chair is going to take longer. But if I go 99, 99, 99, 99, they're all going as fast as if it was the first chair. The problem with that strategy, though, is it's a risk because if somebody does go down, the chairs are still technically up. However, if you go down while doing this and somebody rescues you, you can literally turn around, take the chair down, and now the hunter's screwed. So she is C tier. I don't really like her for the rocket chair ability. What's good is that she increases the calibration scope, which means that it's easier to hit that calibration scope. Um, it's easier to not screw up, although that's not really that big of an issue. But for people with lag, they actually choose her for that increased calibration. So she's all right. Doctor. Doctor, we all know she's tier C. Um, you can use her in many different ways. She's going to have a much more pivotal role in 2 versus 8. She might even be an S tier character in 2 versus 8. We'll wait for that. Um, but there's a few ways you can you can use her. You can either build west and north on the persona tree and really increase your healing speed and your healing time. That means that you can kite and during active kite, and if you position yourself correctly, you can literally heal yourself during that active kite. Um, you can also go west and south and you can build her as a tide turner rescue character the problem with that though is you don't have a stun right the forward has a stun if you can do it correctly the coordinator has a stun the doctor does and so you got to be careful with your rescues even with tide turner because you might be killing your person faster so she's going to be a c-tier character she does have a debuff to her vault but she at least has that uh, veteran bonus to her and she has the ability to heal herself mid kite if you build her north um, it's just different strategies. She's still not a rank caliber character, but she's fun to use. Uh, Lucky Guy. We're going to go to Lucky Guy. We'll go to Explorer in a second. So Lucky Guy is C tier. A lot of people ask why. He's got a veteran bonus. So if you hit him, he's got a really big significant bonus like the doctor does. Um, but he has no debuff to his decode and he has no debuff to his Voltan speed. So his Voltan is the same as the Magician's. His decode is, is I don't want to say technically the same as the the thief because he doesn't have those activated calibrations but it's it's the same as the magician as well the difference is, is that he just doesn't have the illusions but he has the veteran bonus that's the difference between being able to relocate to another position I, you could even argue that that's even better to a degree depending on where you are i mean you that that you can literally relocate to the strongest part of the map although i obviously magician's still better now he does have a buff he has a buff to his to his uh rescue i'm sorry not his rescue his chest we ran data on Lucky Guy, and for the most part, about 90-95% of the time, we got the item that we wanted within the first two chests. That's not a real number. Um, that's just after only 20 trials. So, you know, it's not like we did a... Right, in research, you want a big sample size. You want 100, 150, 200, 300, 400, 500 trials. The more trials, the better, because it's like polling. The more people... You, you, can't, you can't do a research project on on a poll typically of, of 10 people or 20 people. It's just not a big enough sample size. So the same thing with this. So, so take it with a grain of salt. But most of the time, you're getting what you wish for in the first two chests. Um, that does add more flexibility. But remember, C tier is like a continuum, right? Or it's rather, it's a, it's a category. So it, it, it embodies C minus, C, and C plus. His buff did make him better. He is better than what he was before the buff. But it's not enough to see him really in rank matches. Um, he does have flexibility and you can use him uh, using the chest but at the end of the day you're relying on the probability that you got to open the chest you got to hope that you have a thief on your team well, that's, never mind. that's a different thing don't, don't listen to that but in terms of the chest you have to open the chest you got to still it's still a probability thing and um, you're wasting time you're not decoding at that point in time and then if you say well I decode and I only open chests when it's convenient then it's like well then why don't you pick an S tier character well, you don't have to worry about the chest and you can focus more time on the decode instead of spending time going after the chest. You can say you can get the flare gun and it can add, you know, the whole rescue capability. That's that, that that's an argument and that's why he's in C, C tier as well. Um, but I don't have him in B tier. Uh, this is actually an edit. I'm going to put this in here, but it's an edit. What happened was I forgot to talk about Explorer. <laughs> I just completely skipped him. Perhaps he used a minimized book and I completely missed him. Anyway, so... With this year, this year, this round, God, I mean, I'm so embarrassing. Explorer is now tier C. Um, after talking to hundreds of people, we realized, and, and we, we, we penalized him too much for not having veteran bonus. 
and we penalized him um, because of his skill as being uh, his skill was useless and it still kind of is you can use it in the beginning to minimize if you're in a dangerous area and uh, that's when you hear the clown charging that's before the heartbeat there are moments you can use him correctly early game to hide he's still really not that good but he, he deserves in C tier because he doesn't have a debuff to his decoding and he doesn't have a debuff to his vault in, and it also doesn't ping so after listening to many people and listening to the argument I actually think that they were right and we have to address that, right? The best thing, remember the methodology where we need to improve ourselves and how we how we operationalize and conceptualize certain things. And so Explorer rightfully belongs in Tier C. Remember, not all category, uh, in a category, not all characters are equal, right? You can have two characters in the same category, one's technically slightly better or slightly not as good. And in this case, I would rather have a Gardener before Explorer, and I would rather have Lucky Guy before Explorer, and I would actually rather have Doctor um, because if you can kite like you can with a mechanic, then at least you have that, that ability to heal a little bit. So um, we did move Explorer from the lowest tier to tier C. And yeah, so thank you for your input. We have to listen to it. And it made a lot of sense. All right. So let's go to Priestess and Mercenary. We'll go to Priestess first. So a lot of people don't understand why Priestess and Mercenary are in tier D. Now, Priestess and Mercenary are in tier D because of the, primarily the static debuffs, right? They have static debuffs and they're selfish characters. And what I mean by that is that where the, where the forward can do a whole bunch of things, early game, the Priestess is garbage, right? She has a Volton debuff and she doesn't have her portals. She also has a decode debuff. So early game, she is absolute utter trash. So early game is the most important part of the game. So if you're caught by a hunter, your your kiting ability is really screwed, right? You're, you're at that point, um, you're even less than a mechanic probably because although the mechanic has the bolt and things, she still has her doll that could technically take a hit. For Priestess, you have nothing. Now, the problem with Priestess is that her build, her, her debuff, is essentially built to help her with her kiting ability. But she doesn't have, a, so she's not a decoder primarily. You do decode with her, but, you know, it's going to take everyone else a lot longer to decode it's going to take well take you longer it's going to take you an additional 10 seconds or so to take down one machine seven to ten seconds um nine and a half i think actually i think it's nine and a half ten seconds but her debuff is essentially make her a better kiter so essentially you're sacrificing your decode to become a better kiter whereas if you just picked a good kiting character to begin with with a normal decode it would be better it'd be more ideal more so, she's not really a saving character either. And I know what you're going to say. Well, sometimes I sometimes I use my portals and I go for the save. Sure. I'm sure sometimes you can pull that off. I'll give you that. That's better than the thief, but it's not as good as the perfumer. So you have this really bad, stinky debuff, and her portals don't really help anybody except herself. Right? The typical strategy with the priestess is to make sure you always have two portals in your inventory because you need to make sure that you can still kite with her because you don't have a good Volton speed, so you need to compensate for that. Now, you can say, well, I put portals in weak spots to help my team. So that's probability. If I'm, if I'm a top kiter in the game, I'm not going to change my entire kiting strategy and hope and pray that you put a portal in some area where I can't talk to you. So although you are right, the portals can help in the weakest areas, like Sacred Hospital on the first floor and that little, in the Sacred Hospital, that little balcony where that cipher machine is. Yeah, putting one right there is really cool. And that's probably one of the best spots to put it. But you have, you have priestesses who waste their time. They're putting portals all over the place. And I'm not going to negatively score the priestess based on just that bad tactic alone. But your early game is bad. Your kiting ability is not good until mid and late game. And by then, usually the hunter is completely buffed, so it's going to be a little bit harder for you. And if you're surviving mid to late game, then that means that everybody else has to live, has to do a better job because you're decoding substantially longer or slower. So whereas the forward has a debuff to himself, he has the ability to kite early game, mid game, late game. He has his, he has a better skill that's more versatile than than the portals. And he's the second best saver. Priestess, her ability literally is built only around her ability to kite. She's the character you use when you say, I suck at kiting, and I need to use this character. And although it's going to hurt the rest of my team, at least I'll live a little bit longer. right? Because if, you're, if, if I'm a thief, or I'm a perfumer, and I am the one who gets the random probability of the hunter coming after me, 
right? It's a bad thing because now I have to kite longer because you are decoding slower. That's a burden on me, all right? Furthermore, if you're the first one captured, you're going to be super easier to kill than other characters. So you have no early game. You have no early game. If you last the mid and late game, then it's harder for your other teammates to do their job because they have to do it better, right? So essentially, you're saying my character is only good as long as my team can, can be better than normal because my character is decoding substantially slower. Then the next question is, okay, she's got a static debuff. Is it worth it? And the answer is no. The portals are not worth it. They're not worth prolonging the period. And you're not good at rescuing. Sure, sure, you can put up a portal behind and go in for the rescue and maybe the person can go. Sure, I get that. But she's still, and I'll admit that it's better than other characters, but overall, it's still a burden to the team. Now, Mercenary. And by the way, her skill has nothing to do with preventing the survivor from going onto the rocket chair. Like forward does, right? So forward's debuff has all of these awesome positive benefits that are used in high tier matches. Priestess is not used in high tier matches at all. Again, her portals don't really help people unless in certain circumstances that are very circumstantial and not enough for me to say, oh yeah, I don't mind us prolonging how long the map is or the match is. Against these top tier hunters, you don't want that prolonged period. And if it is a prolonged period, you need to increase the survivability of your team. And it's just a lot more... Um, pertinent to use a forward than what it is to use a priestess even with the static debuff because he has all these benefits whereas the priestess doesn't. Same thing with the mercenary. Now the mercenary adds perseverance to the chair and I'll give that to him. He does add perseverance. He's got the built in tide turner to him so his character is better but he doesn't do anything other than being able to kite. His decode is awful. He has good kiting abilities. Probably one of the he's probably the in terms of raw potential um, he's up there in top five in terms of uh, kiting ability. He's got his elbow pads that kind of suck, but you can use. They're kind of buggy a little bit. And he also has he has the ability to vault at 10%, which is good. It's the tie for the third best in the game. Um, but he doesn't really... Uh, so the reason why the devs added the tide turner is because it's supposed to increase his ability to save. And although that's true, it doesn't prolong your survivor's life, really. I mean, if they put if they get put on the rocket chair and you go in for the rescue, yeah, it might take a little bit longer to down them, just a little tiny bit, but they're still going to die. In fact, often it can reduce the amount. So reduce the amount of time it takes to kill somebody because they're going to be constantly going on the rocket chair. The mercenary is not used in top competitive gameplay. So regardless of all of the methodology that we're using, objectively, we don't see them. We don't see them in top tier um, survivors for North America. Europe, and we do not see him top tier Chinese. Whereas forwards, we see him top tier in Chinese. We see these legitimate strategies. We don't see legitimate strategies with mercenary. His static decode is still not worth it. That's why the devs did a good job at trying to buff him to make him as as versatile as what you have with the forward. But it's just not there. It's just not there at all. He has just a horrible decode, just like the forward does. But he doesn't have any harassment. Once one of your teammates go down. It, it's it, there's no reason to to go after the mercenary you can just put him on the rocket chair and actually that's better because if the mercenary captures the person sooner then the person will die when you put him down now there are certain circumstances where you can use the mercenary i understand that oh what about end game and you rescue somebody and give them enough time to hit the exit gates that's if first of all you live end game second of all that that's if that's if that's so circumstantial that's such an individual circumstance that's like me saying i need to buy a ten thousand dollar shelter because what happens if in 2019 somebody bombs us with a new i mean it's so circumstantial that it's like are you going to make this investment for that that random circumstance and you can say yes or no but we don't see mercenary in top competitive play it's just that simple he's not used he's his decode is just it's 25 percent so he he's at he's at 75 percent decode but his trade-off is not worth it, whereas a forward can literally change the outcome of the game and go in for rescues and stun the hunter and get that rescue. Mercenary doesn't really offer any of that. He's still D-tier, and I haven't met a single person out of the hundreds of people I've spoken to about this list. Nobody has refuted this. F-tier. <laughs> Lawyer is garbage. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain it. His skill is terrible. Um, his, his, his decode is whatever, it's, it's, um, it's normal.
but his, uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. This video is going on 42 minutes. I'm trying to do my best to really articulate everything. And with lawyer, the problem here is that with, with, with lawyer, you have the Volt and debuff. I just said that. I'm losing my train of thought. The map is useless unless you're a new player. So the map is completely useless. Um, at least as a permanent item. I mean, if you see it in a, in a chest, you can pick it up real quickly and check if you're down to the last two ciphers. Sure, that's pretty cool. But it's, I definitely wouldn't want that. And, and he's just he's an awful character. His entire ability essentially is that if, if you're around other characters, you can help decode speed. Early game, you don't want that. Early game, you want one person on a cipher machine. That's it. One. You need to diversify the map. If two of you are, if two of you are on the same cipher machine, that's bad. Especially if the hunter comes, because now both of you are dispersed, and now half of your team is 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 not decoded. You need to diversify the map. That's how it works. Because if you have all the cipher machines end game right next to each other, it's a lot easier for the hunter to to camp that. So you need to diversify the map. That's just how it works, all right? And his ability is based on late game, and that's even if you last late game, and that's even if you have the coordination to be next to people late game, because other people, other other people might be, uh, that's a phone call, other people might be rescuing, whatever, so his ability is just, it's terrible. He's not worth using. Now, let's get to the cowboy, right? No one's ever argued the lawyer thing except, except, except some of you trolls in my Discord. <laughs> um, cowboy. Terrible character. He's got a static debuff. Well, okay, he's got this weird debuff where it's a static and dynamic, right? It changes depending on uh, how you play him. But his lasso is garbage. His lasso is not good. Everyone says, well, you need to just play him better. No, you need to play better hunters and have the actual realization that he's garbage. Because his lasso has to be pinpoint accurate, and it's short. It's nothing like the gamekeeper's hook where it automatically will find... That's my puppy. Will automatically... Bandit, say hi. Say hi. Where it automatically finds the character and it can reposition to get the hook and it's not as long. So, with that being said, with his lasso, skill is useless. He's the reason why the explorer deserves to be in, in tier C because his skill is probably <laughs> almost as useless as what the, what, what the explorer's book is. But on top of that, he's got a bad decode speed. Well, what if he's with women? Yeah, sure, but it's still bad. He still has a static debuff despite that dynamic buff in there. And what's even worse is when there's two males on the same machine, and now you're talking about a negative debuff of an additional 30%. You want to go out? I don't know what my dog wants. So he's definitely F'd here. Um, I'm getting. I'm actually getting a uh, a little bit tired. This is a long video, guys. This is this is like a 45 minute video. But you all been waiting for this. And it's my job to explain this to all the new players, etc. I do want to check one thing, though. Because despite having everything memorized, I forgot one thing. And so we're going to check this. And we're not going to... And maybe we'll edit it. We'll figure it out. Give me one second. Now, now let's let's start about his lasso. His lasso is literally useless. So, so we just said how it's useless in terms of the functionality, but his skill is actually pretty terrible, because what happens is is that if you have a male on your so okay so rocket chair somebody's there, you lasso the male. He's on your shoulder, right? The problem is is that the number one player is Joker for the most part. Number two is Geisha, but usually Joker. Feaster is there as well, but you have Joker. He can easily hit you. You might say, nah, no, he can easily hit you. In most of the areas, he can easily just rocket dash you because he has it unlocked. And at that point, the person just goes down. It's easier to kill them, and you're now a one-shot kill. It's even worse with a female because if you have a female on you and he hits you, okay, now you go down, you're an easy, technically a pseudo terror shock, and now she's a one-hit kill. And if it's against a competent clown, he's not going to pick you up right away. Now two people... Literally, the skill is useless. It's not waiting. Most of the time, it's going to put you in harm's way. So he's, he's, just, he's not good, especially against the current meta with the uh, hunters. So don't use him. He's just bad. All right, guys. So I'm tired. Um, I hope you liked the video. We are, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to upload this. And I'll try to space it out. 
so you can check your favorite character. And I really hope that you guys like this. We put like 30 hours into this. Uh, in the description, I'm going to put a link to the image so you can redistribute it so other people can see it. So you don't only have to rely on, on my video if you don't want to. And yeah, I hope you guys like this. This is the, definitely the new character meta right now. We've talked to way too many high tiers. We've done too much objective analysis. That also is beneficial to, to us and the Chinese players. We've talked to Chinese players, top Chinese players. We've talked to top U.S. players. I'm a top U.S. player. We've talked to Liv and Remy and Nori. We had people, we've had numerous chat sessions in the Discord with dozens of users. I hope you guys appreciate this, and I hope you can understand why there is a difference um, with the current meta. And I really hope that you guys can um, show other players this. This is 2.0. All right, I'm done with this video. I'm tired. I hope that I see you guys on my Discord sometime. Thank you for the 4K subs on YouTube and the 900 followers on Twitch. I hope I see you guys soon. Take care.